Three years have passed since the Chiss and Terrans defeated the CZ Rook Imperium. The fighting was long and bloody, but in the end, they achieved victory. The Chiss wanted to devastate the CZ Rook and end them as a threat. However, the Terrans talked them out of it. The technology, resources, and manpower the CZ Rook could offer the Terrans proved too valuable to throw away. In a few short years, through war and occupation, the Terrans' galactic territory nearly doubled. By treating the CZ Rook even-handedly and fairly, the Terrans have been able to avoid the creation of insurgent groups, for the most part. There are still those who resist, but the Terrans avoided needless cruelty. They didn't want to shoot themselves in the foot. A CZ Rook has the same rights as any citizen within United Earth space, with the exception of being able to vote, though that's on the verge of changing. Five years have passed since the Declaration of New Order, the declaration that turned the Republic into the Galactic Empire. Since then, aliens avoiding the persecution of the Empire, as well as looking for a better life after the destruction of their home during the Clone Wars, have flocked to Earth space. Earth's rapid colonization has resulted in the young civilization needing people, be it to establish new colonies or settle pre-existing ones. The recent rapid and no ending in sight immigration has resulted in many of the large colonies feeling unrepresented within the New Earth government. Understanding what taxation without representation can do to a civilization, the United Earth begins to reorganize into an intergalactic government instead of an interplanetary one. In the years fighting with the Terrans and aiding them in stabilizing the occupied CZ Rook Imperium, Thrawn began to believe they might be the best choice in the galaxy to challenge the Far Outsiders once they arrived. He believed that wiping out the CZ Rook would have been the safest option. However, the pragmatism behind the Terran's choice made sense. They need resources and people. The Rook's strange technology was also a bonus. During the war, Thrawn's command of the Cerberus became the stuff of legend. His tactics and sheer intelligence brought the Terrans victory when they were in the Jaws of Defeat. Information about Thrawn's ability reached the ears of Emperor Palpatine. As the third year of the Imperium's occupation ended, Thrawn was given two offers mutually exclusive to one another. The day United Earth was reorganized into the Outer Republic, a name Thrawn found humorous in a roundabout way. The Terrans had a knack for sending clear but muddied messages. Palpatine's offer was still fresh in his mind. A captaincy aboard a Star Destroyer and aid in defeating the Far Outsiders. However, Admiral Hackett, Admiral Anderson, Admiral Janeway, and Admiral motherfucking Sisko approached Thrawn immediately after the formal declaration of Republic. They offered him the position of Admiral of the Third Fleet within the newly structured Outer Republic military. Similar to the High Admirals of the Empire, the five Admirals of the Outer Republic would wield tremendous amounts of power. Each fleet had a purpose. The first fleet was to defend Earth as well as her inner colonies. The second, to defend the mid to outer colonies. The fourth was tasked with peacekeeping operations in the larger parts of the unknown regions, while the fifth was the first responders to a crisis, the first responders to war. The third, however, would be tasked with expanding the Outer Republic through whatever means the Admiral deemed correct, with the exception of war with a galactic civilization. The Admirals offered this position to Thrawn because of his brilliance at command, but also because of his darker nature. The Outer Republic was aware of what he had done to land himself in exile. He was cold and calculating, as well as charismatic and diplomatic. He was the right man for the job. There were races and civilizations that were small within the Unknown Regions. If they could be brought into the Outer Republic, they would be stronger when the war with the Empire came. United we stand, divided we fall. The Terran's attitude, as well as willingness to do what needs to be done for the greater good, was something Thrawn admired about them. With his choices laid before him, Thrawn weighed his options. The Empire was the safer bet in regards to a fight. They had more ships, men, resources, and worlds. Being a captain for the Empire meant he could work his way up the chain of command, one way or another. If he gained the position of High Admiral, or even a Moth, he'd have more Reese's at hand than the Outer Republic has at the moment. 
However, cracks had begun to form within the Empire. Slavery, rebellions, as well as xenophobia was rampant. The command structure of the Empire was also a problem. The captains, admirals, and almost every other high-ranking member of the Empire was ambitious. If Palpatine died, if Vader died, there would be severe amounts of infighting. The Empire would collapse. The Empire was built upon a foundation of gravel. If one thing went wrong, it would all come tumbling down. The Outer Republic, on the other hand, was risky. They were small and were the Empire's only real rival with the exception of the Ascendancy and maybe the Huts. Other civilizations existed, this is true, but they didn't actively challenge the Empire. However, unlike the Empire, the Outer Republic was stable. The issues presented by the colonies were addressed before a rebellion was even thought of. The officers are veterans of past conflicts. They want to ensure their people and the refugees who flee the Empire are safe. The Terrans have an understanding of the greater good, of the common good. They know that hard decisions have to be made. However, they also understand that needless cruelty will cause more harm than good. Sometimes compromises have to be reached. The Empire or the Outer Republic? That was Thrawn's decision. While contemplating the choice, trying to see it from every angle, he thought back to the Terrans fighting alongside the Chiss. They fought and died for a people they hardly knew. Their choice was pragmatic to be sure, Hackett said so himself. However, Thrawn still couldn't help but appreciate what they had done. The Outer Republic had the ability to become something great. All they lacked was experience and time. The Empire was something great, but cracks were forming. Thrawn pulled out an old Earth coin from his pocket. On the front was a general from the Nation of America. Thrawn came to learn that he became the leader of the nation once it was independent. On the back was a bird, an eagle it was called. Placing the coin on top of his pointer finger and thumb, Thrawn flipped it. He left the room before it landed. Entering the meeting room, Thrawn accepted the position of Admiral of the Third Fleet. Before the other admirals could speak, Thrawn interrupted and continued. He warned everyone in the room about the Far Outsiders, and stated they were more of a threat than the Empire. The admirals learned everything Thrawn knew, and the information was passed to officials within the Outer Republic. The months following this information were strange. The Outer Republic and other admirals didn't know how to process everything they were told. The only thing they could do was prepare for the war with the Empire and ensure they survived. With luck, they'll be strong enough to endure the Empire and combat the Far Outsiders once they arrived. Thrawn wasted no time and began his mission with pacifying and unifying the Unknown Regions. Under his direction, the Outer Republic would explode in size and power. In a different life, he created the Empire of the Hand. In this one, he would help the Outer Republic grow to new heights. The tactics of his alternate life would lend themselves well in his current one. From his personal fortress world of Nuruan, Thrawn would oversee the developing civilization while he prepared for the wars to come. The years leading up to the Galactic Civil War would play out in much the same way as they would without Thrawn. The Outer Republic would continue to build, prepare, and scheme against the Empire. The major difference being, however, is the work of Thrawn. Within 15 years, the sheer size and power of the Outer Republic eclipsed their expectations, and it shocked the Empire. At first, many races who were still independent and lived near or in the Unknown Regions were hesitant to join. However, Thrawn was able to guide the needle of diplomacy, one way or another, and convinced some to join. Over time, Thrawn's small snowball of civilizations turned into an avalanche. Most civilizations within the Unknown Regions flew the Star Banner of the Outer Republic, the only real exception being the Chiss. However, Thrawn attracted vast amounts of his own people to the Outer Republic banner and gained support from many aristocratic houses. The Ascendancy didn't trust Thrawn due to the actions of the past, but the Terrans' actions during the war with the Rook offset this to a degree. They didn't approve of Thrawn, but they didn't disapprove of the Outer Republic. Over the 15 years, the Ascendancy and Outer Republic would develop a positive trade relationship with one another. The Chiss had a knack for taking Terran technology and making it better, just overall. Over time, Chiss scientists and engineers who were willing to move to the Outer Republic were given positions of great importance 
within the realm of Terran advancement. Due to the resources, manpower, and infrastructure the Outer Republic now has access to, their fleet became a force to be reckoned with. It was still smaller than the Empire, but it was too large to crush in a few battles. The Empire understood that war with the Outer Republic would be a nightmare if the rebellion that had begun to plague them got any bigger. Despite preaching caution, the Outer Republic would still support the Rebel Alliance in its early days, much like they did in Earth and Star Wars 4. Thrawn did not approve of the Rebellion because of what it could mean if the Far Outsiders were to appear. If the galaxy was divided and at war, there would be little chance of victory against these invaders, or rather, the cost of victory would be incredibly high. Through his agents and the intelligence agents of the Outer Republic, Thrawn understood why they were helping the Rebellion. The enemy of my enemy is my friend, and the Empire was certainly the Outer Republic's enemy. Ever since the Declaration of Republic, the Empire had cut more and more ties with the Outer Republic. Prior to the Battle of Scarif, they barely interacted outside of veiled threats. The one thing that prevented Palpatine from going to war with the Outer Republic, though, was the Imperial Senate. The war against the CZ Rook was played up by the Terrans. War films, as well as other pieces of veiled propaganda, became popular among the wider galaxy. The Terrans were masters at entertainment, especially in the art of cinema, as they called it. The Terrans were able to spin a story so compelling that the wider galaxy viewed them as nothing but heroes. Against the odds, they stood against a more advanced race that wished to destroy the galaxy. They died to protect everyone. The films the Terrans released before they became illegal within the Empire spun the story of a valiant underdog fighting a behemoth they could only hope to defeat in order to protect the rest of the galaxy. When the Terrans won, the whole galaxy celebrated as if a great series had come to a happy ending. The reasons for these films were three-pronged. First was to win over the populace of the galaxy, to win over popular support. If the galaxy loved the Outer Republic, an unprovoked war could lead to turmoil within the Empire. The second reason was to convince people to come to the Outer Republic. By painting their way of life as something worth fighting for, those oppressed by the Empire who could get away would be compelled to flee to the Outer Republic. The final reason was money. The amount a studio could make doing a war film, and the take the Outer Republic got was, well, filmmakers of the past wouldn't be able to believe how much money those films made. The Imperial Senate was an extension of the people's will within the Empire. Palpatine needed to give them the illusion of power. He needed to give them the illusion that they actually mattered. However, by the time the illusion was revealed, when Palpatine finally showed his hand, the Outer Republic was too powerful to take on without actual thought put into it. In the last few months of peace, the Outer Republic would learn of the Death Star and work closer with the Rebel Alliance. Thrawn knew that the Death Star would present a real problem for the Terrans. Namely, it puts Earth in great danger. As the Battle of Scarif unfolds and Admiral Hackett sends in parts of the Fifth Fleet to engage the Empire, Thrawn would launch the campaign against the Empire that he had been planning for years. Thrawn's guiding hand resulted in an Outer Republic larger and stronger than it could have gotten on its own. With war now upon them, Thrawn would cement his name within Terran history as one of their greatest heroes and as one of their greatest leaders. Hey guys, Bufire one on one here. Sorry this episode was a bit delayed, life got in the way. It, there's a lot of stuff that I kind of left out of this one that comes from episode 4. So basically, or let me rephrase that, Earth and Star Wars episode 4. So a lot of the things that happen in the background of this episode are basically that video. And I just didn't want to reiterate information or else I'd be here forever. But yeah, so if you're a bit lost or want a refresher, I recommend checking out that video again. But yeah, so I really hope you enjoyed this video. Tell me what you thought. I've been Bufire191. I'll see you guys all next time. Goodbye.